Welcome to Fit Body Lifestyle, the show where we dive deep into the world of fitness, health, business, relationships, and the art of living a balanced life. I'm Jamie. And I'm Greg, and we're here to give you the benefit of our experiences in the fitness and bodybuilding industry, the corporate world, running a business, personal development, and building healthy relationships. Whether you're sweating it out in the gym, hustling in your business, or seeking balance in your everyday life, you're in the right place. So lace up those sneakers and grab that water bottle and let's get ready to transform our minds, our bodies, and our lives. Welcome back to another episode of Fit Body Lifestyle and our fusion hack for today. And we're here with our lovely guest, Nicole. Hello. <laughs> we're so excited to have you here today. And we're going to be talking about thriving with hypothyroidism. Thyroidism, that's all. <laughs> hard word to say. Um, but first, just introduce yourself and tell a little bit about yourself and um, then we'll get started. Yeah, I am Nicole Desmond. I'm a Fit Body Fusion coach and a national level bikini athlete. And yeah, I I'm, live out in Colorado. I live a super active lifestyle. I work full time, coach part time, just super busy, busy gal over well, here. I don't think you coach part time. I think you go everything you do everything is, is kind of full time. Everything is full time. Yes. <laughs> and you're let's not forget life adventurer. Yes. Life adventurer, which is my favorite title you have. Yes. So, oh, you want me to? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go. Okay. I'm not just, <laughs> I thought it was going to be couch candy for this episode, but I just made that word up. Word. Um, I love it. Couch candy. <laughs> couch candy. Wow. Okay. So that's let, a new one. We're coming okay. up with all kinds of things. back on target, today. back on target. Okay. Well, let's so, start by talking about what is hypothyroidism. Well, that was a question I was going to ask. <laughs> that's okay. You're couch candy. Okay. Yeah. So in the most basic terms, hypothyroidism, your thyroid is uh, an organ in your body that kind of basically controls metabolism and hypothyroidism is the underproduction of thyroid hormones. So my body does not produce enough thyroid hormone for my body to thrive and be optimal. The converse of which would be hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism, okay. correct. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how did you discover that this was an issue? Yeah. So this happened uh, in 20. 21. I had just come out of a competition season. I was reversing and I was sticking to my reverse pretty on point for one of the first times ever, I think. And my food was not very high. I was very slowly reversing and I was gaining a ton of weight and something just felt really uncomfortable. Like I felt really inflamed. I felt really off. I didn't quite feel fatigued, but I, I kind of did. I just didn't realize it kind of thing. And so for the first time, I decided to get a full kind of labs done, blood work. We really talk a lot about that on the team now, but I think a couple of years ago, it wasn't something that I even really thought about. And so I went to see a hormone specialist and got all my labs done. And she essentially looked at my thyroid and said, yep, you know, it's, it's, moving, it's trending upwards towards, you know, subclinical hypothyroidism and you're not producing enough of these thyroid hormones. So your body is kind of in this inflamed state. And the recommendations there were, you know, a, a lot of different things, but essentially that's how I found out I had it. And it kind of made sense to me. I was like, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. How I, how I feel is aligning with this diagnosis. Right. And there's um, a lot of things that can trigger it right? Yes. So what did you learn as you kind of dug into that a little bit more? Yeah, I went down a really deep rabbit hole. So I really am someone who doesn't like to take medication, doesn't take, like to take even like Tylenol when I have a headache or anything. So I was really adamant about not wanting to go on medication at first. And so I wanted to really understand what causes this, which dieting can definitely cause it. So competing probably pay, played a factor as well as like genetics and stuff, which I'm not sure when it comes to my family, if they have anything that has to do with this. Um, but the other factors that I started to discover were diet. So I went down a rabbit hole of reading this one book specifically, I remember on, you know, healing your thyroid and how certain foods can cause it to be triggered essentially in your body. And some of those foods were large food groups that a lot of people consume on a daily basis. And that would be gluten, dairy, corn, soy, um, and then heavy levels of mercury. So eating a lot of fish and then like environmental toxins is another component of that as well. So all of that can contribute in what I discovered when I was down that rabbit hole to triggering kind of like a flare up in terms of like having these bad lab results and feeling the way that I was feeling. 
So once you understood it and you went down the rabbit hole, then what did you go about? How did you go about addressing it? Yeah. So I went down this rabbit hole and I very hardcore for that first six months of trying to kind of heal my body. I pulled back on training because overtraining can cause it. I started doing just yoga and walking. I cut out all of those high trigger foods and realizing like I was consuming a lot of gluten, dairy, not so much, um, soy, not so much, but gluten. And I was eating a lot of shrimp. (laughs) So the mercury in that was, uh, there's not a lot in shrimp, but I was eating like, it was like most of my, but even though there's a little bit, a lot of a little thing. Yeah. Most of my protein intake because of prep was coming from shrimp because it's got less fat in it. So I think that was a component. And then, so I really hardcore threw myself into this diet. Oh, eggs and corn also, um, which were things that I ate eggs at least every day. And as a bodybuilder, egg whites, it's easy source of protein. Staple, so yeah. it was really hard. And I remember the moment I was sitting in bed, actually, it was like nighttime and I was eating egg whites in bed right before I was going to sleep, reading this book. And I read this, I'm reading the list of foods to eliminate and I see egg whites and I'm like, well, oh, crap. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm so, so hungry. <laughs> yeah. So I like eliminated all those foods for six months. Really? Like it was, not so easy at first because it was kind of like learning what's in everything again. Like, okay, well, you know, a lot of substitutes for gluten have corn and I can't have corn. So, and I, for some reason, didn't know that tofu had soy or is soy. (laughs) So I just like (laughs) had all these like learning experiences of trying to really go at it from the perspective of like eliminate all of this and, you know, see if that helps. And then I also went down this rabbit hole of, you know, my beauty products, my household products, and kind of figuring out what a non-toxic lifestyle looked like. Um, But with the diet component, what I noticed within the first two to three weeks of doing this, I dropped almost 10 pounds of inflammation in my body just like that. It was like night and day and I felt so much better. And so that's kind of how I started to tackle it at first because I really, really, really wanted to avoid going on medication. Um, So I did that the first six months, went and got my labs retested. And while I could feel the difference in my body, my labs were not reflective of that. So my thyroid was still underperforming. Um, So I did decide at that point to go on thyroid medication and I've been on it ever since. And it's been a huge positive impact for me, but I still have also kept up with the diet portion of it. So I don't consume all of those foods, I would say 90% of the time. Um, And I actually discovered that I have kind of allergies to some of those foods once I tried to reintroduce them. So I think that what happened for me in my body was that I was consuming some of these things like egg whites on a daily basis. And my body just kind of was like, okay, well, we're going to deal with it. And then when I eliminated them now, when I try to reintroduce them, I, I, like I get horrible stomach cramps or I start to see almost this like autoimmune response of inflammation in my body start to immediately happen. So I'll get like puffy in my face, things like that. So the diet and combination of medication has really been what's worked for me. And then also continuing to really th- try to lead a non-toxic lifestyle because During this rabbit hole that I discovered or went down, the thyroid health led me to dig into liver health and liver health, you know, your liver is like your filtration system. So eliminating as many toxins as I can from food, beauty products, environmental stuff, um, household products, you know, fragrance, that kind of stuff is something that I take super seriously now to make sure that I'm keeping not only my hypothyroid is an thyroidism in check. It is a hard word to say, um, but preventing it from turning into something, you know, like Hashimoto's or something, because I know that that could, it can trigger an autoimmune response. Yeah. It's interesting because when you were talking about how the inflammation started to drop off, what I was thinking immediately was, I wonder if you had an intolerance to some of the foods, Uh because if you're eating something all the time, you may not know you have an intolerance or an allergy to it because you're kind of, it's like, it's like if you're always running a a low fever, you don't really notice that you have it because it's just always there. So you're used to it. And then you all of a sudden when it's gone, you're like, oh, wow, that feels much better. Yeah. And what's interesting too, is I think I would get, for example, I think that I would get like stomach pains or cramps and things like that. And I would maybe attribute it to like my cycle or something else. And in retrospect, I kind of had some epiphanies during that time when I was trying to reintroduce other foods like eggs and corn specifically, 
um, corn, I went to, you know, a Mexican restaurant. I ate a bunch of corn chips and I got a horrible stomach ache that night. And I didn't really think of it. I just was like, oh, I'm, you know, about to get my period. It's maybe that. The next night I went to the movies and had popcorn and the same thing happened. And I kind of had this like epiphany of like, I've had this stomach ache before and I think it might be from this. And now I'm kind of putting the pieces together of like, oh, like it, my body has been telling me I just haven't been listening. Eggs were kind of difficult for me. I keep saying they're my most difficult breakup I've ever had to do because I love them so much. But if they're not super high quality, they will absolutely hurt my stomach. And then if I eat them every day, regardless of the quality, I do get inflamed. So it's like I have them every so often if I'm going out to brunch and things like that. But ultimately, I do notice a huge difference in how I feel in my body with inflammation specifically. And just like, like I'll be like puffy, like if I have gluten a couple days in a row or dairy or whatever. And it just, even if, you know, even if I didn't have hypothyroidism, I think I would still avoid these foods just because I can understand how they make me feel. So uh, we got to wrap this up, this yeah. little fusion hack, but I think this is really essential and I, I want to give people the kind of the takeaways that I, and I, I want your buy-in with these, if these are the right takeaways. Yeah. I think the first takeaway is pay attention to how you feel. Yes. Um, and Jamie, what you were saying, I think is really helpful is that you may become immune to a reaction that your body's having simply because that's the reaction that you're always you're having. Used to it. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. um, so pay attention to what you're feeling. The two is get your labs, uh, Drawn. Absolutely, yes. That, that, that may be one, N, one A, one B. Uh, and then consult with a medical professional yes. and recognize that with a medical professional, one thing I will say is sometimes you got to push them. Um, sometimes you got to push them for what you're feeling and what your labs are and your well, thyroid. You might even yeah. have to push to get labs. That's true. You yes. may have yes. to push them to get a full panel of labs because a lot of them will, a lot of labs, they will just run T3 yes. um, and they won't run the full thyroid yes. panel. TSH. TSH, sorry. Yeah. TSH. They'll run TSH, sorry. And they won't run the full thyroid lab. So yes. um, you got to push for that. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, running the full thyroid panel is super important. I think I experienced that with a lot of clients who don't go see a functional doctor. I think the other takeaway that I would like people to kind of focus on is to look at root cause. Um, it's easy to say like, well, my thyroid's failing, like I'll just go on medication. But I right. think if you figure out why it's happening and maybe what triggers it and how you can kind of correct it even within your lifestyle, even if you have to go on medication as well, that that's going to help you in the long run, prevent it from getting worse. Lifestyle modification would be the fourth thing. I, I love that. Okay. So we are done and we are going to sign off and remember to like, comment, subscribe and leave a review. Yes. And <laughs> yes, I got it that right too. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And be safe. Take care, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Fit Body Lifestyle. We hope today's episode has left you feeling motivated and equipped to tackle your fitness goals, business challenges, and the daily dance of life. Remember to value progress over perfection. Life's tough enough alone. Find the chosen family around you to help you along the way. If you enjoyed today's episode, we'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite streaming platform. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Fit Body Fusion.